Welcome to Founders or Friends podcast with Scott Orn at Cruise Consulting. And today, my very special guest is Ann Jaskew of Tactic. Welcome, Ann. Thanks so much for having me, Scott. Uh, my pleasure. This is this is one I've been looking forward to. And before I, as I said, before I turn the mics on, we talk about you constantly because Cruise loves Tactic. Uh, you, I don't want to steal your thunder, so maybe you can tell everyone, uh, uh, you know, your background and how you had the idea for Tactic. And before we do that, just I'm a tiny investor in Tactic, just so for full disclosure, so everyone knows who's watching this. But maybe tell tell everyone your background and how you had this awesome idea for Tactic. Yeah, absolutely. So rewind probably 15 years. Uh, you know, I was applying to college, knew I wanted to do computer science, was very excited about the space and tech in general. At one point thought I might end up being an academic and was you know very into math, which is why cryptography always appealed to me. Didn't really end up doing anything with that out of school. Uh, honestly, didn't know what to do with myself. So I went over to Goldman Sachs. Um, really grateful for my time there, but stayed just about long enough to learn I was a startup person. So I've been doing uh, high growth New York City. I'm the same. I'm the same. I worked at Hamburg and Quist, J.P. Morgan, and I realized I was not cut out for investment banking too. That was a, that was a fast lesson for me. Yeah, it's an absolutely incredible organization. And again, so happy I have that point of reference, but I just belong in tech companies. I love shipping things. I like moving. I like getting stuff done quickly. Um, and I, I was pretty sector agnostic throughout my career. So I started at a marketing tech company. Uh, my most recent long stint was over at a company called Flatiron Health. I was there from six years, uh, everything from you know early days. We had a dozen engineers through multi-billion dollar exit you know, company of well over a thousand people. And I just love that startup experience. While at Flatiron, what I, what I did there was, you know, take messy data, build data pipelines to clean it up and sort of make it regulatory grade. Um, so that, you know, later on kind of explains where, where the tactic tech comes in. Um, but yeah, absolutely love my experience, but, um, on the, on the more personal side, wanted a break, knew I wanted to start something, um, and actually quit my job February 2020 to try to travel the world. I uh, sold all my furniture, got rid of my apartment, and got on a one-way flight to Tokyo March 1st, 2020. And Amazing. <laughs> it, March 1st, 2020? Yes. And so oh, I had a solid 10-day vacation in Japan. And then I found oh, myself my back in my childhood bedroom in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, oh, my God. With, I didn't know that. Because yes. that's about kind of when we met. Yes. But maybe like three months later. Yeah. Yes. And so I uh, I had a lot of time on my hands, needless to say, um, as I was alluding to just, earlier. Just to interject there like having soul got rid of your apart like you there's no safe place for you to go you're you're like one of the like you're like the college students who had to come home almost, yes you know? like, i was literally in a twin bed with like a meerkat poster above me oh my god um so yeah quite the quite the adjustment but obviously locked inside you know wanted to learn something new loved my experience in healthcare but wanted to try something different um, and yeah, started diving into, into crypto white papers. So when I had first taken a look at Ethereum a few years prior, I always thought it was just academically so cool, but it seemed really mm. hard to, to build anything. So I look at yeah. it as a technology and, you know, compared to relational databases, it, it just wasn't mature enough, but you know, 2020, 2021 rolled around and there was just a lot of excitement in the space. It seemed like the smartest builders were going to build in crypto and uh, just a lot of funding for for great projects and more and more mature teams. I don't know if I told you this when we first met, but that was one of my observations too. And I often say this to people because, so I, I worked at Venture Capital for a long time. You see the quality of founders. The founders are almost like a, a university class or something like that, like the class of 1999 or 2010 or whatever. And what we saw like kind of beginning like maybe two or three years ago was was the like the the average level, the average quality of the founders in crypto was going way up. Previous to that, there had been this gold rush ICO thing maybe like six years ago. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of like kind of get rich quick, little sketchy, you know, kind of people. And then it like changed. And it, it's exactly like right what you're talking about is when it changed, which made me like super bullish for the sector and gave me a lot of comfort actually. Cause it was like those professional founders, like the people who have done it before. And this is so interesting. It's pulling them in now. I, I really love that. Yeah. What have you been seeing in your crypto practice as it grows? It's, it's growing a lot for everyone who, uh, you know, this, so I'll just say it. 
we are very excited about tactic because part of our limitations on crypto is some of the accounting around it like it is it's actually it's and you, why don't i i don't want to see your thunder so like maybe you talk about it and what you guys are doing because you're basically a giant enabler for us so we're kind of like we're like you and i are walking on a path you tactic and crew is like walking down this path in parallel processes right now and we keep looking over there to see how you're doing and you're looking over at us to see how we're doing because because you tactic are a huge enabler for us to be even bigger in the sector yeah so i'll, I'll hop back into the story because i guess that is a, a relevant segue but i was you know working on a crypto project myself and and got to the point where i was ready to raise funding and just had to sort of set up my finop stack and get generic boilerplate stuff going so i was using my payroll software uh deciding if i should pick ramp or brax and you know knew i was going to be building something on ethereum and having tokens floating around so I started asking, you know, crypto people in the space, other founders, like, hey, how are you doing this? And I remember, Scott, we connected and yeah. asked, hey, like, how do you guys account for crypto? How do you actually go from, you know, these tokens among different wallets and exchanges and these growing teams that for the first time are going to be needing audited financials to, you know, your clean Excel spreadsheet balance and all of your... Do you remember what my answer was? Uh, this Ethereum uh, thing uh, is killing us. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was miserable and we were attempting to do it with spreadsheets, but it was horrible. And not just like for, for, for accountants, it's, it, there's a real um, sense of satisfaction for doing a great job and taking things to completion. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more frustrating than getting caught in the middle or having stuff not be correct and then having to check it. And we, we have like all this liability and all these like checks and balances on us to do things correctly. Mm -hmm. So we were like, you were like a gift from the gods when we first talked because I actually hadn't seen a, a tool like what you're building. So so that was a big, actually it was a really great moment for Cruise when we first talked about this. Yeah, and the irony is that blockchains are in theory distributed public ledgers. So you would think to they're totally. the most transparent thing possible, totally. but they're paradoxically just so opaque because trying to go from an Ethereum transaction of you know downloading the raw ledger um, to something that meets gap standards is you know a non-trivial endeavor. Um, you, and the, even the way I describe it to founders will be like all, all ledgers, all accounting ledgers are set up to work with banks because mm -hmm. that's that's who had money for a thousand years or two thousand years or whatever, right? And then all of a sudden, this new invention called the blockchain is a different kind of ledger that isn't a bank ledger, and there's no accounting tools for it, mm -hmm. like at all. You know, so that that I think that's like if you kind of think about what you're doing, you're you're building things have been done a certain way for two thousand years, and now you're doing you tactic are doing it for the next thousand years, or ho hopefully many more years than that. But uh, we'll see. You know. Tactic may outsurvive me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. Anyways, okay, because he cause keep going. So you basically realize you're like, holy cow. There's not there's no way of accounting for this stuff. Yeah, basically. absolutely. And then I think your your reflex as an engineer is to see a lot of numbers floating around in a lot of spreadsheets and thinking, oh, I can absolutely automate this. And you know, pulling that initial data set is isn't super hard. Um, I think what we've learned, especially from teams like yours, is that you know accounting is so nuanced, it's so important to get things right. And it, it, it's easy to declare like, okay, we integrate with your ERP, but it's so much more complicated than just shoving a journal entry into QuickBooks and hoping it works out. So really understanding yeah. those workflows, getting it right in light of the rapidly evolving regulatory landscape is something we've really been focusing on. There, I actually, so um, we could maybe even, we, I had the pleasure of sitting in because we, I think our accounts have done a lot of like one-on-one -on -one calls or things like that, but I actually got to sit in on, well, it was probably like four months ago, right? Mm -hmm. Where you had a couple, I think someone from your product management team was talking to our, probably three or four of our accounts. Cause we have at Cruise, we kind of want, well, not everyone's working on, on crypto companies, but we have like three or four people who are really interested in it and they're taking like three or four at a time mm -hmm. kind of thing, basically like baby steps. But I was really um, like you guys asked really good questions, and you're right. Like the the an, an engineering mind would be like, oh, we can you know, we'll pull this all together and get a journal entry and a QuickBooks, and then. But hearing the accounts talk was pretty interesting because they they need to reconcile against something, and they need to have like a clearing account, and they need to be able to show the client actually everything's accounted for, even though there's all these 
uh, transactions that are essentially like offsetting each other, going in different directions, you know, but here's our support. Here's actually what supports what we're seeing in QuickBooks, just so you know, just in case you're ever audited or just in case for if the tax team needs to look at this and like really dig into it. Yeah. That's where I thought you, the tactic team was really shy. I'm forgetting the guy's name, but there was a guy on the call uh, who was really that, good That too. is Ezra, our beloved PM. Yeah, he was good. He was really good. But that was interesting because it was it was a lot of those kind of questions, like support questions, documentation questions, almost like packaging around what the software can do. And then there was a lot of human usability stuff too. You know, I still remember one of our team members, Beth, was she, like we had a relatively new and and she was kind of like ask like it, it was she was channeling the client's confusion basically. And, 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 and it was, it was a really good conversation. So kudos, kudos to you and your team for engaging like that. Like that's, it's actually pretty, it's pretty amazing. We don't have that many conversations like that. Yeah. We've been trying really hard to just focus on our end users because that's the way we've seen in every tech company we really respect succeed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the lesson from us, from like our business too, and this is so applicable to you is that if you do a good job, the startup founders are so it's such a it's club is the right word it's such a network it's such a just a group of people who kind of know each other like if you think about it you you and i were introduced via carolyn starrett from flatiron who's a friend of mine who's ceo of flatiron now but like that's that's the club at work that's the network at work and what we've always just focused on is if you do a good job you're gonna get plenty of business there's just so many you know if you become known as like a quality provider quality tech partner the, f the founders are going to, you know, spread you word of mouth, especially for like tactic where you are right now, because there's not, there's not much out there as a solution, like competitive solutions. And so like, like people are, there's, there's a, there's a healthy amount of desperation almost of like, we've got, we really want this to work and we're willing to invest the time. You know, like you, you, you referenced like ramp and Brex earlier. They were kind of like fast followers in the credit card market, mm -hmm. you know, in the expense management market. And so there wasn't that like crazy, uh, frothy, like I, I really want to try this and it's working. It ended up, we ended up finding, we ended up after testing Brex, realized that, that Brex solved this one major problem for us, which was Amex and Chase were terrible, had terrible integrations with mm -hmm. our stuff and QuickBooks. And Brex made it all really easy. And that was like the trigger. Mm -hmm. But it took a little while for us to figure that out. For you, it's like, holy cow, we the, we do not want to be doing anything in spreadsheets. We, we need the supporting documentation to be there. We need it to be correct. Go tactic go, you know? Yeah, and we really appreciate all of your your feedback. I you know can't say enough times how how helpful you've been. And I should probably be transparent that we ourselves are a cruise client and as mm. a result can recommend you. We don't like to, oh, to recommend you. products we don't use ourselves. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's, and by the way, it's not me. Just so the audience knows, it's like our team. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not the the genius on any kind of accounting. I, I was kind of saying I'm like probably the worst accountant at Cruise. Um, so, so it's really like the onboarding team and the account manager team have done a really, really good job working with you. So. Yeah, and it's just so. You, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say, um, it's just very interesting to see the perspective of people who are used to traditional finance trying to apply those same concepts to crypto because in some ways they are very similar and then in some ways they're they're extremely different. So Scott, if I'm sending you, you know, one Ether token, that's not too complicated of a transaction. It's minus one for me, plus one for you. Some pricing volatility, a transaction fee, but something you could do in a, a spreadsheet and not super complicated if you're doing it once. You start doing it thousands of times, it gets a lot more complicated with volatile prices. And then you start doing weird things like the crypto concept of an airdrop where someone just throws tokens in your wallet and you don't know what to do. It's imagine you're, you know, you're running a company and someone drops a bunch of Japanese yen in the middle of the office and runs away. Like, how do you account for that? Who is responsible there? And also like the transactions that are like the fee component of the transaction and the actual money transfer. Mm -hmm. That's what confuses me the most, to be honest with you. And also the fractional nature of the transactions where no one gives like one ether. They send like 0.257895, you know, like there's so many, like, I think it's really interesting. You're talking like what other types of complexity do you see? Like you have to have, you, you personally probably have all the stuff in your brain 
it's so many edge cases, right? Oh yeah, I have uh, I have learned a lot of fun facts. So NFTs are a very interesting use case. It's sort of this new category of digital asset. Obviously, a lot of excitement around it. A lot of incredible builders. I think we're we're all on the same page that this is going to be part of online identity moving forward. NFTs are you know by nature non fungible, which means they are really hard to price. So how do you do something like NFT impairment? like the same way you do with a painting, right? And if I am a private company, like imagine being a startup that has a bunch of rare pieces of art on the balance sheet, one of which could yeah. just randomly crash. Like, what does that mean for my bottom line at the end of the quarter? And I never thought about that. You're totally right. So do people do impair, this is like, again, I'm not the best accountant. Do people do impairment charges on NFTs or is it like an annual, you have to read like almost like a venture capital portfolio. You have to like reevaluate each, each company or each NFT. Yeah, we're seeing people handle it different ways. Uh, from a regulatory perspective, it's honestly still unclear exactly what should be happening. Yeah. Um, what we see is because the prices fluctuate so much, sometimes people use floor price as a point of reference, which is also kind oh. of weird because it's like trying to price a house based on the general suburb. Um, I, we talked to you know a, a CFO recently who was worried that someone on his team was going to buy an NFT or they would get gifted one by a client and it would go from one ETH to a thousand ETH, which can quickly be hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. And suddenly you have this surprise asset that you can't ignore if an auditor comes. Also potentially surprise tax exposure. Yes. That's the other thing. I, I should have remembered this early in the conversation, but like we've seen companies... I can't tell you how many companies took like some form of crypto payment just just because they're believers or things. We, we don't really encourage that, to be honest with you. We'll, if your business is crypto, go crazy. But if you're just like taking some crypto payments or whatever. But we've had companies swing dramatically into profit, therefore tax, because they just they took something like two years ago. It's been sitting on their balance sheet as a very nominal amount. And then. We'll ask them and they'll be like, oh, yeah, that is worth $10 million now. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of thing. It's it's it really is the wow. Do you feel like it's is it getting slowly more normalized or is it still Wild West? Like what's your where are we in the timeline? It, it probably depends what what day you ask me. I think I think there are a lot of very smart people asking the right questions and I do see progress coming. But then every once in a while, some new protocol crops up. And it's sort of like, wait, what is, what is going on here? So you have Ethereum of it itself, you have layer twos on top of it, and how you treat something, you know, what's called like an optimistic roll up where there is a world in which a transaction can get stuck for two weeks if things don't work oh, out. Really? I didn't even know that could happen. Yes. Really? Yes. There are, there are a lot of fun edge cases and it's, it's unclear what happens, like if, what happens if you get hacked, uh, what happens if your assets get frozen, what happens if the network goes down. I, how do you handle that two week one? Because that's like total accounting world. Like there's a giant gap, right? Like what do you, what do you do? Again, just, just choose the me methodology and stick to it. So you can see like the tactic software can see what's happening and maybe talk about really getting the nuts and bolts of tactic too. Like how does tactic oh. work? How does it integrate? Yeah, absolutely. So our goal is to get all of your transaction data into one cohesive place in a standard acceptable format and help you get it into your, your enterprise resource planning system. So you can almost think of us as an Ethereum subledger and that lets you sync into QuickBooks, categorize your transactions, um, add memos, add attachments, whatever you need. So in many senses, very similar to traditional fintech software. Yep. And the part about adding memos, adding categorization, adding almost like adding vendor Yes, is actually really, really helpful for us. That's your, that's like the key fun and, and also being able to reconcile and visualize reconciliation. But that's actually really, really powerful. And I actually found when I start when I would because we we send clients to you, you send clients to us. But when I started sending clients to you, when I started referring to it as like uh, ledger accounting software or sub ledger crypto software, that people like got it instantly. Cause they, they probably had, it was probably like this problem. They didn't have a word for mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then, and it re that really actually, that's how we talk about tactic internally is like, it creates that. Cause we're so QuickBooks focused, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have a few clients on NetSuite, but it's mostly QuickBooks. And so we think of you as like, 
doing all the dirty work, all the plumbing, all the, the crypto accounting to make QuickBooks kind of like a lot easier for us yeah, it, and make sure it's accurate, right? Exactly. And it's funny you say that because early on people would tell us, oh, you're building QuickBooks for crypto. And I feel very strongly that QuickBooks is the QuickBooks for crypto. So if, yeah. if I went to your organization and said, hey, we're ripping out QuickBooks, you have to fully use this new thing. You have a great accounting team trained on QuickBooks as a tool. Yeah. And the vast majority of clients we serve is still, you know, transact heavily in fiat. There's no one we, we work with that is pure crypto. So they're paying their office rent in U.S. dollars. More often than not, they're paying their employees in U.S. dollars. And crypto is on their balance sheet and part of their day to day. But it's only a chunk of that. So our theory is we don't need to train more crypto accountants. There are you know, a lot of great accountants already trained on traditional paradigms. We just need to make the blockchain world play well. Yeah. And we're grateful for that. And it it is. But it's also like. It's, it's so power. You, you mentioned the second part of that there where, cause what we've kind of seen with clients is they'll start in one blockchain or one cryptocurrency. And then especially this, this is really the crypto, the crypto is their business mm -hmm. kind of companies, right? Forget the companies that just have like some exposure somewhere on something. They, they, they very quickly move. They, they get one down, they start working on that. And then, then there's the next protocol, the next protocol. And that's, that's what I like about how you're approaching the market is like, you're basically setting yourself up to handle, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like every protocol or eventually every protocol mm -hmm. so that people like us can just come to you or introduce a client to you and be like, Hey, these are the two or three things they're using. Anne and the tactic team will take care of it for you. Right. That, that's like our holy grail. That is that is absolutely our goal. I think what we've been very deliberate about is trying to stay disciplined on focusing on building well in one area. So we only supported yeah. Ethereum for a while. Um, I think it's it's easy to do the very you know base case, like I like I said, of just like hey, let's get a transaction page that shows a, a bunch of different things going on. But once you get into more complicated crypto events, once you have a hundred thousand transactions and you want to bulk categorize them. Once you want to, you know, be able to do more nuanced filtering, once you want to roll up journal entries um, and, you know, really dive into the more accounting nuances, that's when you really need to take care from the product and UX perspective. And it becomes less about the underlying data and more about your end user. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I think what I hear you saying is get it right the first time, make sure it's really working and then then start branching out, which I couldn't agree with more. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of why we jointly have this uh we're so uh, we're so tied together because we also don't want to take a lot of we don't want to spin our wheels basically on stuff that we're not experts in or can't do and that's why we we work so tightly together because you guys we know we can trust you to actually make it something that works the nightmare scenario for us is we accept a bunch of clients on like a new protocol or something like that and then our partner can't can't handle it. And then we're stuck with the client relationship and delivering bad news. And God, heaven knows we're never going to sign a uh, incorrect tax return. So the, mm -hmm. it's just like it has a lot of downstream negative effects. So we, we appreciate the commitment to doing it right, getting the feedback from the customers and making sure we're all going the right direction. It's That's really, really valuable. It's, it, this isn't a... Uh, what Zuckerberg saying, move fast and break things. This is not a move fast and break things uh, thing for us. No, definitely not. And it's in some ways counter to the crypto space, but I think it's it's the direction it's moving. And as, as we said, it's, it's you <laughs> totally. have more and more builders diving in, more and more venture funding, but also more and more financial audits as a result. Uh, I yeah. think we, oh, yeah. we have to get this one right. Yeah. You asked the question earlier about what we're seeing and it's like, it's it's overwhelming amount of crypto companies. There's it's it's it, there's there's just a ton. There's the you, I, like that's why I'm so excited for your future because I know I can see what's you know people paying us or super exotic uh, use cases or many many entity use cases that are all dealing with crypto. You know stuff that we in. in Again, we we do stay disciplined. Like we'll say no out of out of respect, out of like, hey, we we only want to do a good job for you, kind of thing. But but tactics future is very very bright. Like there there's so much demand. It's 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 you. you I, I give you a lot of credit personally because I still remember like those first couple conversations where you're like, I think I figured this out. I think I figured out what I want to do, and I just see this whole you know glaring hole in the market. And I you know thank thank you for 
making that commitment and taking the jump, jumping in and doing it because even if you would have waited three months, it would have been three months too long for us, you know? So I'm, I'm, it's, it's very like having, I, my wife is our founder. So like I saw her make that jump to get crews going. And I think you deserve a lot of credit for, for taking that jump and having the courage. And, th- and now you're seeing it through, which is the, the second hardest part. <laughs> This is, this is, it gets, it gets hard here too. Yeah. In some ways it's easier once you have an idea you're obsessed with. Like I stumbled upon this and was like, how has no one built this yet? It seems so obvious. Yeah. yeah. Um, so very lucky, you know, to have the backers that we do and have the the team around me and have, have been able to build things out. But I think we're, we're just getting started. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I love it. Well, so we should wrap up here in a second, but any, any things you want to, um, I guess the audience we, we talked about some good stuff coming down the pipe before I turned the microphone on. So I don't want, I don't want to break any news here or anything like that. That's not the, this is not a news podcast. Okay. Well, but, uh, I guess what people should all pay attention to tactics releases and press and all kinds of stuff over the next month or so. Yeah. So we'll have some exciting things on, on Twitter and some press releases about new functionality and new partnerships that we're, we're really excited about. I think we've met a lot of great people in the, in the crypto space who are focused on doing the right thing, following the rules and helping set up that FinOps stack for mature companies. So helpful. So helpful. I mean, you, I don't even know if I ever told you this, Ann, but like Vanessa found Gusto, which was called Zen Payroll. Mm -hmm what, you know, she was like, when they were like a five person company and they were working in someone's house and, and Expensify, Bill.com very early, you know, Rippling very early, all these Brex very early, you know, it's, and I, I put tactic in the same box, you know, like there's, there's these really amazing enabling tools that make the accounting business scale and make the clients happy. And there's nothing better for us than we're talking, we're talking to the client who comes to us thinking they probably, but there's probably no solution. I won't build, I don't know how to do this or things like that. And we say, guess what? You should go talk to Anna tactic. This is actually a really good tool that we can use and we can scale together. That's the best feeling for crews in our, our team. And you're in that category and we really appreciate everything you and your team are doing. Yeah. Thank you so much for, you know, your support and uh, honestly product validation early on of like, yes, go build this. This is absolutely a use case because just hearing that for, you know, the first few times you hear that, that gives you so much energy. Yeah. I think every time your team gives us an idea, our engineering team gets excited. That's awesome. That's great. Well, tell everyone where to find you, how to reach out. And I recommend they use Tactic. Yeah, absolutely. So we are Tactic.com. Uh, very straightforward. Um, you can find us also in the in the Ramps Partners Program, the Mercury Perks Program. Uh, have something special cooking with crews as well. Uh, nice. And yeah, we're also uh, Choose Tactic on Twitter. Still have not gotten that that handle, but got the dot com. Can I also? You have the most adorable name for the people who work at Tactic. I don't know if this is public. Are oh you, yeah, are you still using we it? well when when someone new joins, we say welcome to the pack, and you assume that's a wolf pack. We say no, we're a pack of Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs is the that's the best name. I saw you reference that in email, and I thought that was amazing. Yeah. So, so last mo- last month we had three new Tic Tacs join the pack. Best 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 word ever congratulations that that just shows what kind of culture you're building too I, obviously building a culture is way more than just having a cute name <laughs> but it shows how everyone's thinking there so all right everyone check out tactic.com thank you and we'll have you on we'll have you on in a year and we'll talk about all the new spiffy software you built and how you're making the cruise clients life a lot easier great thank you so much scott really appreciate it <laughs>